The Ateneo Blue Eagles have been struggling in the teams that they have faced in their summer league so far. So I, I kind of understand why people are saying that they have, they're panicking that this year for Ateneo, they're not gonna get into the Final Four. So in this video, we're going to check if they could still make it to the Final Four. Is it time to panic or not? So let's go. So let's first go through the past games that Ateneo has been in. First for Pinoy Liga, they lost to Guangming College, 65 to 60. Lost to Lasal, 95 to 67 in a beatdown. Uh, they forfeited their game against NU. Lost to LPU, 71 to 68. Lost to Mapua, 65 to 58. Tapos sa Phil Oil, lost to Adamson, 61 59. Lost to UST, 63 52. Lost to UST 63-52. And there are some people that are saying that they could lose their next few games as well in Phil Oil. Same as last year. Looking at all of this, I believe that there are three reasons why Ateneo is not playing to their usual standards and why they have been losing. So number one, there's no FSA. I mean, yeah, pe people are gonna say that Victor Balogun is there. But after playing against Lasal, he hasn't been playing anymore. So I don't know if there's an injury, if it's grades or other reasons. It's the fact that Ateneo right now has no mold of Ansh Kwame, walang God's Love and Mabude na nasa US na rin to play US NCA Division 1 without an FSA tapos kakalabanin mo yung mga Henry Agunane kakalabanin mo yung mga Mo Diasana all the hulking big men that the UAP has to offer especially sa UST si Peter Osang at si Tongkara how, how are you gonna face that diba? kung pure local lang kayo all Filipino lineup so that's one reason so what does it mean kung wala kayo FSA? It means you're giving up a lot of rebounds, you're giving up a lot of points in the paint, you're giving up the offensive rebounds, you're giving up intimidation, which means a lot of people or players are going to keep attacking you relentlessly inside. Ang daming, ang daming factors ng walang FSA. But in Ateneo's case, meron nakita example dito that they went up against Adamson who had Oja Ricre as their FSA. Pero sila, again, all Filipino lineup. But they out-rebounded Adamson 52 to 39. And that's because of activity. And Ateneo has a lot of players that can crash the board. When they faced UST, you would think that UST out-rebounded them, but no. Actually, UST and Ateneo had uh, the same number of rebounds with 44. Although, if you check the field goal percentage here, UST made 47% of their field goals while Ateneo struggled, shooting just 26% from the field. When I rewatched the game, UST was just killing them inside the paint. And again, that goes back because of the lack of fight. The effort is there for Ateneo, pero since wala ka yung 6-8, 6-10 guy, it's gonna be a long game. Second reason why Ateneo is struggling is that they're entirely new roles for the returning players. So number one, Chris Kuhn. Si Chris Kuhn na ngayon yung parang King Eagle basically. Siya yung first option na Ateneo. If they want to score a bucket, if they want something to happen on offense, they go to Chris Kuhn. And that is understandable. He's 6'6", six, 6'7", six, six, plays like a guard. He is a guard actually. He doesn't play in the front court. He is a guard or sometimes the wing. But Chris Kuhn brings down the ball sometimes. His handle has, getting, has gotten better. So Chris Kuhn has been aggressive all throughout. It's just a matter of getting used to the pressure, getting used to the defense of the teams, more focusing on him. He needs to understand that if there are no baskets that are going in for his school, he really needs to step up. And that takes a lot of free wiring. You, can, you cannot just tell a player to, hey, be the first option. Go. It takes a while since last year he was what second he was the third option he was the second option second third fourth pa nga even that is the purpose of summer leagues like this which is to get used to your new role and be able to adjust to the kind of physicality and game planning that the opposing teams will have on you. Second one is Mason Amos. Mason Amos is expected also to be a second option since it looks like Chris Kuhn is the one doing the heavy lifting on scoring. So Mason Amos. We know he's an amazing three-point shooter, a, a great low post option as well. Getting more used to his body because I heard that he has a new diet right now which is to reach a certain weight and kind of physique in order to hang around with the bigs of the UAAP. And I know that he has been operating in the perimeter but again, since Ateneo doesn't have a lot of options right now, Mason has to do a lot more. And I believe that he's one of the few guys that will be up to the task. I believe that he can do it. It's only it's only the summer. By the time UAP comes in September, I think he's gonna surprise us. Next up, Sean Kitevis. So Sean Kitevis, new role this year is also gonna be... So he's a de facto shooting guard, right? He is also being sometimes slotted as the point guard. So for a guard that's currently right now reworking on his shot, trying to be more of a outside threat for Ateneo when it comes to shooting from downtown. There's a lot of growing pains when you're trying to 
change your shooting form. Sobrang tagal niyan. It usually takes months for a player to get used to his new shooting form. But the defense is always there for Kitevis, but he knows and realizes as the captain that his offense needs to get better if Ateneo will have a shot in making it to the Final Four. Another guy I'm, I'm high on and I believe who can have a, but not, not an entirely different role, but a role where it's kind of a step up from last season is Sean Tuano and Drew Bongo. Both of them are wings for Ateneo, but I can I saw from the past few games that I've watched them is that they've been more aggressive on offense, they've been slashing through the lane, and it's just a matter of getting their confidence up and understanding once again that there's more weight on their shoulders right now. Unlike last year na pwede pa sila mag fade into the sideline, into the background, and it, it won't have much of an effect sa team. Pero this year, it's different. If they do not perform well, good luck. Good luck sa team. And Kyle Ong, since he's the only legit big man of the Ateneo Blue Eagles right now, at six foot eight, six foot seven, a lot of unnecessary pressure will be put on him. And that's because he's the only big guy. And uh, some people will expect him to have 10 points, 10 rebounds, 3 blocks. Some people will expect him to, do you know, like perform beyond his abilities right now. And I think we have to temper expectations. Or if you're an Ateneo fan, you have to understand that Kyle Ong wasn't playing for Team A last year. Or at least the minutes that you expect him to play. Or I think reserve player ata si Kyle Ong last year. Point is, from a bench from a reserve player last year to now playing majority of the minutes, assume natin dito na walang Victor Balogun or walang FSA. Ah. Kyle Ong, he's in my prayers every day because he needs it. It's the own fans of Ateneo that will attack. That's the toxic part of the UAP. But I'm just saying the truth here. Now, and number three, Ateneo has no big man. Sometimes you can say that no FSA means you still have big men in your rotation, right? But Ateneo, yes, they have Kyle Ong, but I'm talking about a reliable big man rotation. Ateneo used to have, what, Gio Chu, Kai Balungay, Ansh Kwame, rotation of guys that they can rely upon to get the rebounds, have specific roles, fill the paint, block some shots, be a consistent force inside. That is the biggest question mark right now for the Blue Eagles. Right now, in Phil Oil, nakakasabay sila sa rebounds. Okay, nakakasabay nga sa rebounds, but when it comes to defense, dun, lumalabas na yung mga numbers. Like, nakita ko, okay, same pala ng rebounds yung Ateneo and UST, but when you saw the field goal percentages, ang layo ng gap ng Ateneo sa UST, and that's because of a lack of a reliable big man. There's more pressure on the wings, there's more pressure on the guards. In a way, nagiging one-trick pony ang Ateneo because they know that they don't have a guy right now to be a consistent threat inside. They all have to get their points from the perimeter. And if you get your points from the mid-range or perimeter, that means field goal percentages will drop compared to a more safer shot inside. Yes, Ateneo has slashers, but any team, kahit sa ang liga pa yan, you need a big man. So is it time to panic for Ateneo? No, not yet. It's only in the middle of the summer. I'll only panic if sabihin natin first week of September, we see the same problems, then yes. But... That's why there are summer leagues like this. All the teams, or Ateneo, Ateneo and a lot of teams will have more summer camps to go to. I believe they're going to Australia for another international trip to train. It's concerning. I won't say I'm gonna panic if I'm an Ateneo fan. But it's a cause of concern na, wala ta- na walang big man ng Ateneo, then it's gonna be a long season. Anything can happen. Alam nyo naman sa basketball, sabi nila, bilog ang bola. And see you guys next time. Peace.